In the English language, we often use certain terms to represent a number of items. For instance, when we see the word pair, what comes to mind is two of something. The, the word dozen refers to 12 of an item. A ream, as in a ream of paper, refers to the number 500, in this case, 500 sheets of paper. Now, a mole to a chemist also represents a certain amount, and that amount is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, this number is not one you'll need to commit to memory, but you'll use it quite often. It's available in your IB data booklet, and it's called Avogadro's constant, given the symbol L or NA. Don't know if you heard, but do you realize that if you take an avocado and cut it into Avogadro's number of pieces, you end up with a guacamole? Now, I mentioned particles. The word particles and entities can be used interchangeably. Let's look at a couple of examples of how the word can change its meaning. If I have one mole of copper, copper being a metal, exists as atoms. So that would mean I would have Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. In this case, the word entities represents atoms. Suppose I had one mole of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a molecule. Looks like this. So as a result, I would have Avogadro's number of hydrogen peroxide molecules. Now, each of those molecules contains two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So if my question had been how many atoms are present in one mole, I need to go a step further and I would have to double this number as there are two hydrogens present and double it again because of the two oxygens. Suppose I was given one mole of aluminum oxide. Now aluminum oxide is not a molecule. It's what we call an ionic material made of a metal and a nonmetal. Here's a picture of a look at what its crystal looks like. And the formula aluminum oxide refers to the ratio of aluminum and oxygen present in this crystal. So if I was given one mole of aluminum oxide, it would have what scientists would refer to as formula units of aluminum oxide, not a molecule because it doesn't exist as a molecule. But if I was asked how many aluminums are present in this one mole, well there's two aluminums present in each mole and three oxygens present. So again, just as in the case above, if I was asked about how many atoms are present, I'd need to modify this number slightly to reflect the fact that there's two aluminum atoms in each formula unit and three oxygens in each one. Let's look at how one calculates moles from a couple of different perspectives. If you're given a number of particles and you're asked to find out how many moles there are present, one simply needs to take that number of particles, n, and divide it by Mr. Avogadro's number, and that would give you the number of moles. There's another technique to find moles if we're given the mass of a substance in grams. To do that, we could calculate the number of moles by dividing that mass by something we call the molar mass. The molar mass being that mass of substance that contains Avogadro's number of particles. Let's look at how you could figure out what that number happens to be. For my example, let's go back to a substance we had earlier, H2O2. And I would like to know what one mole of hydrogen peroxide weighs, what its mass is. Well, the first thing I do on the periodic table is I look up hydrogen, and in particular the number down below, and I realize that two moles of hydrogen would have a mass of 1.01 grams and I have two moles of oxygen present, and oxygen is 16.00. I add that all up, and I get 34.02 grams. That would be the mass of one mole of hydrogen peroxide. Hence, we say its molar mass is 34.02 grams 
for every mole. So to use this formula, let's say I was given 68 grams of hydrogen peroxide. And I would like to know how many moles that is. Well, I know one mole weighs approximately 34 grams. So as a result, I have approximately two moles of hydrogen peroxide present in 68 grams. Let's use this in another uh, example. An aspirin tablet. In an aspirin tablet, we have 181 milligrams. So my mass is 181 milligrams, which I'm going to convert to grams by dividing by a thousand. I'm asked how many moles are present. Well, given the mass and moles, and if I consult my formulas over here, it's fairly obvious that this is the one I'm going to need to deal with to calculate my number of moles. The other piece of information I therefore need is what's the molar mass of this chemical. So there's the formula for ASA, the active ingredient in aspirin. It tells me I'm going to have nine oxygens. And when I consult the periodic table, they're 12.1 grams each for a mole of them. I'm going to need eight moles of oxygen. I, I should say hydrogen at 1.01. .01. And I'm going to need four moles of oxygen atoms each mole weighing 16 grams. Add that all up and I get 180.17 grams per mole. So putting in our numbers, we have 0 0.181 grams on the top. One mole weighs 180.17. Solve and with three significant digits, I'll put the zeros in that should be there, and I get the number of moles. In my second question, a continuation, how many molecules are present? What I'm after here is N. The number of moles I've calculated in my previous work and we need Avogadro's number which again is a constant and available in your IB data booklet. And that's particles or entities per mole. The other formula I'm going to have to rearrange this formula so that I can get the number of entities or particles and it says that N then is going to be N times L which is Point zero zero one zero zero times six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. I can replace this with ten to the minus three and therefore just add exponents together, giving me my final answer, which I have down here six point oh two times ten to the twenty third molecules. Now you're going to have to make yourself fairly familiar with these two formulas because they'll be used quite a bit from this point on, and we'll use them in a lot in our next program, which is called Percentage Composition. Thanks for watching.